Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to uh, the sixth week of our class. Hope all of you all are doing well. Um, good to see um, all of you here once again. Um, we could start with, with a word of prayer. May I request any one of the students to um, start with prayer? Shall I pray, ma'am? Yes, Avni, please go ahead. Thank you. Father God, we come to your throne of grace with thanksgiving in our heart this morning, Father, for giving us a new morning. And as your word says, your mercies are new every morning. We stand in your mercies, Father, and we thank you for this provision that we are learning such beautiful truth, truths that are timeless truths, Father. And as we are learning it, Father, we ask you to bless us with the wisdom to understand them, accept them, be blessed by them, Father, be strengthened in them, Father. We ask you to bless our pastor who's teaching us with patience and love, Father, to be anointed. And as you speak through her, Father, we bless her with all the blessings of life, Father, with good health and with joy of the Lord, Father. And we pray for all the students who are part of this beautiful fellowship to be blessed with wisdom and favor to receive your word in its fullness be growing in it father and be a blessing to the nation father to everyone we meet father and help us to glorify you in everything whatever we may do father continue to lead us by your holy spirit through the entire class we give you glory honor and praise for you you deserve everything father we ask this prayer in the precious and matchless name of jesus our savior amen amen Amen. Thank you, Avni. Thank you. So welcome and good morning to everyone who joined in. Um, thank you for being here and uh, taking time to pay attention, to listen to God's word, to contribute, to share, to give your testimony, to ask questions. Uh, a welcome to our e-learning students as well. Thank you for uh, taking time and um, the efforts to for discipline and uh, go with these classes. Um, so to to uh, start off, maybe we, what we could initially get to do is have a recap of what has uh, what has happened in our last class, what we learned in our last last class, so that those of um, you know the students who were not able to join us can catch up with um, what we did so would someone like to be would like to brave it and uh, talk about what is it that we dealt with last week feel free to go through your notes and uh, uh, um, refresh your memory so that uh, you know you can you can help others also so yes, so it's open for a few minutes to the class to talk about, and maybe somebody knew, you know, there are a few of you all who are very faithful and, you know, they wait for some time patiently. And if nobody's there, you know, they pitch in. And uh, let's be fair to them and give others also an opportunity come on so maybe those of you who have not really shared earlier or in the last two weeks to look at what is it that we learned are you scared of Or are you still waking up from bed? So which of the two is it? Okay, so it is in both. So what's the third reason? Come on. I don't like calling out names. Okay, this is pin drop silence. 
So come on, somebody volunteer. Even a point is good. One one point is is good. So you know, we, we will we we went through the basis of our healing and deliverance. We looked at two points in week four and we looked at three points in week five. So in one of those points that we looked at week five. <laughs> Thank you, Avni. Yes, one of the points that we looked at is our basis of healing and deliverance comes from the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the word, the power of God's word. And we looked at one more, the verse, the authority. Yes, the authority that we have in Christ to cast out demons, to cast out evil spirits. Right, so we were, we saw of our basis for healing and deliverance, and we had covered uh, two other points before that. Yes, thank you, Anita, that we are a new creation. And what is the first one? The very most important part of our, of the basis of our healing is what? Is what was provided for us on the cross okay yeah so because of what was provided for us on the cross thank you prabhaka that we are moved uh, we are uh, moved from darkness to light from a place of curse to blessing okay yes so this is what we have learned now these these truths are important for us to know um, you know i i I've mentioned this many times earlier is that these are foundational to our um, receiving. It's only if we have strong foundations are we able to stand in a place of receiving. So this becomes bedrock to our knowing and our faith and our understanding that healing and deliverance is ours because of the provision uh, of the cross, of what Christ did for us on the cross, of for us being able to move from defeat into victory, from darkness to light, from curse to blessing. And whatever he defeated um, on the cross, you know, we, has become ours. So that's our first basis. The second basis is that we are new creation. When we believe in Christ, we become new and all things have passed away and the new has come. The third we spoke about was the authority, where we have the authority to cast out uh, all the works of the enemy, all the powers of darkness. The, uh, the fourth one that we looked into was um, the word, where we build ourselves on the power of God's word. We stand on, on God's word and what uh, his word says of us, so we meditate on his we because his word is living and his word is powerful and when we feed our souls with god we experience healing we experience expectation a hopeful expectation we experience strength um we our desires are that which is shaped by god and there is an alignment to his will and to his to his blessing and the uh, fifth one that we looked into was the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that all believers have been anointed with the Holy Spirit. And we, we've read that in, in Scripture in John, that those who believe in Christ are the ones who uh, receive the anointing. And uh, we, we saw even examples of how Jesus was anointed by the Spirit, um, uh, before his his ministry, and as believers, we are also um, anointed, and we can go out to declare and to bring about healing and deliverance um, for ourselves as well as for those around us. So it's the anointing that breaks those bondages and removes that oppression of all kinds. Okay, so that's that's where we ended the last uh, week. And today we are going to be looking at this week and the week after. We're going to be looking at how do we receive this healing and 
uh, and deliverance. So knowing is one, standing on those foundational truths is one, and also receiving is, is the next part. So here we're going to be looking at uh, three main aspects of it. And uh, then we're going to be looking at some action points or, you know, certain certain aspects of how we can actually receive it. So these this um, week and the next week, as we go through some of those points, we're also going to uh, take some time to pray, to be to minister to one another and apply what we are learning so that um, we can receive healing and deliverance in the areas of our soul. So each of us have some stage or some place that we are in where there are hurts or um, struggles or scars that we have in the depth of our souls. And uh, as we go through this lesson, you know, we don't want to keep it to the end, but to be able to go through uh, applying this for our lives here and now and really experience truly the healing and deliverance that God had for us, okay? So this is like we, like I always say, this is not just academic, this is experiential for us. And we are going to demonstrate that right here when, as, as we are all together gathered here through this medium, the Holy Spirit works, whatever the medium is, and brings about our healing and our deliverance, okay? So we are, we're going to be, we're going to be doing uh, some of that today. All right. So looking at receiving healing and deliverance, the first point that uh, brings about is our healing and deliverance comes through our sanctification and consecration. Okay, so so I'm, I'm sure these words are, um, or these terms are things that you have heard of and you've understood, uh, but just for, for the benefit of clarity and benefit of, of all of us here together, just to understand these meanings, the meanings of sanctification. So the, the generic uh, understanding or meaning of sanctification is to... to uh, to keep aside for the state of a good or a proper functioning. Okay, So to sanctify something or someone is to set that person or that thing apart for a greater use or for a use that is designed by um, the designer. Okay, So the word sanctification is also related to the word saint. Now, both these words have to do with holiness. So to sanctify something is to keep it aside, to set it apart for a special use. To sanctify a person is to make them holy. So sanctification is the process of being made holy. Okay, the process of being holy. The word consecration means the the separation of oneself from things that are unclean, especially things that can defile or contaminate or come in between one's relationship with God. So yes, consecration definitely carries the connotation of sanctification, uh, of, which would mean to, uh, of holiness and purity. So as true believers in Christ, this act of consecration involves, what does it involve? It involves, as it says in Romans 12, it involves our lives being a living sacrifice to him, and which means we are separated from the defilement that comes from the world. So each day we are to live um, out holy lives. We, our lives um, are to be lived as holy and as set apart and as uh, set apart to God for, because now we are God's people. You know, the, the example that, that I usually like to take is um, when you have guests coming home, 
you know you have a certain set of cutlery or crockery that you will take out you may not use your general plates or uh, things that you use on a daily basis right but you have kept something that is set apart um, to host your guests right so similarly it is once you are in Christ you are a believer you we go through a process of sanctification and consecration where, where we are setting ourselves apart for the use of God and also to be able to make uh, to bring about holiness and purity so this and consecrating would mean to separate ourselves from anything that brings about a defilement um, so you know you you consecrate your your mouth you consecrate maybe in a place where you're working you um, come to a place of consecration of your words and say that you will bring about only words that uplift and edify and build and not words that you have maybe used prior to knowing Christ that has been uh, obscene or ugly or that has that has been destructive so you consecrate yourself and this is something every believer must do you know every believer experiences this this sanctification when when we are being made uh, holy to god we experience this sanctification and deliverance so through this process of sanctification and consecration every believer ex can experience healing and deliverance it is a normal way that a believer believer can experience deliverance as you keep growing in this process of setting yourself apart keeping yourself away from things that can defile you uh, and it may be and and it can be in different areas of your life when you consecrate or when you sanctify yourself unto Christ healing and deliverance takes place in these areas so it's an ongoing process so when we are in Christ and sanctification is not um, is progressive right there is an instant justification we have and there is a progressive sanctification we have we are being made holy up until the time you know we are with the Lord so every day is a uh, a new day where we come to a place of being set apart so when we set apart our lives and keep these areas of our lives in submission to God we are healed and we are delivered as a result okay so the example that you you can uh, you know that that's brought up, brought about in the notes is um, you know like like for example um, each of us have garbage at our homes right and uh, when you clean out the garbage all the pests leave right the cockroaches or the flies or whatever they leave they are they are not there any anymore and so similarly we and, and you do this every day it's not a one-off thing every day or maybe twice in a day depending on the number of people you have and how much you cook right you you empty out your garbage so that you there isn't a room for uh, flies or for for cockroaches so similarly we also continuously need to wash out our our in a in a person or our souls we wash it out because we do see that whenever there is like it's it's only when there is garbage do flies come in if there isn't garbage flies don't accumulate there so similarly only there is uh, things that that make us unclean does it attract uh, the evil one does it attract the evil spirit uh, you don't find that if you are kept holy and kept consecrated so how do we do that in 
you know, as in the sense of um, what would that mean? It, it means that keeping our minds and our emotions in a place of consecration or in a place of sanctification. When the mind has engaged in probable wrong thoughts, what you're doing, you're consecrating and sanctifying yourself, keeping that apart and saying, and uh, uh, making that commitment to not indulge or involve yourself in thoughts that can defile your mind. So keeping your mind sanctified. So when we we must keep in uh, keep an uh, understanding that our healing and deliverance doesn't always have to. Um, you know, one coming home and or you know someone really casting out demons all the time or um, you know having it in a very aggressive form okay where someone shouting and casting out the demon it can uh, most often it happens at as a very quiet uh, stage as we walk with God as we go through this process of sanctification and consecration and that you know, in itself, cuts off every kind of ties and and brings out those spirits that that have about entrance to us. Okay, um, so so some of the examples that you you know, I, and I've heard many examples of this: people who've been uh, stuck deep in addictions, and uh, um, you know, who come to the Lord, and in in the process of sanctification and consecration in the process of keeping themselves away from bad company keeping themselves away from uh, you know indulging in probable triggers that cause them to maybe involve themselves in in that particular addiction um, uh, continued speaking of the word uh, continued fellowship with others who encourage um, and and are accountable to so all of this together uh, accumulates and builds about that healing and deliverance so much of that happens through the process so one of the biggest ways we can receive our healing and deliverance is just being in that place of setting ourselves apart for the use of God for the purpose of God keeping ourselves away from anything that defiles our inner man and also you know the the things that we learned the last time you know with the power of the word just keeping ourselves enriched and strengthened and and uh, built up by the power of god's word we see that our healing deliverance takes place okay now this is this is something um, which all of us uh, are in a place of doing right that we know that uh, this has to continue that we keep doing this and we are all called to live that life of holiness and purity so as we keep walking and how do we walk you know as ephesians tells us about the armor of god we walk uh, with that armor of god with walking in that righteousness we are just protected by what can attack us so this is um, it's something that we all are doing or we all ought to be doing or we all are in the process of doing and as a result our healing and deliverance comes the the outcome is that there is healing and deliverance um, I think one of the biggest examples that um, we can we can look at is you know um, especially when uh, now this is this is outside of the soul I'm looking at a physical, um, healing, you know, some pain or some disease or some ailment that you have, maybe so often there are times that it doesn't happen instantly. But the more that you speak God's word, you just uh, um, declare his promises, declare his word in time, you know, you will begin to see that p the pain goes away or that, you know, whatever the growth was, it has shrunk or what have what probably has seemed to be dead in a relationship seems to become alive uh, just last week i had um, a, a young person message me she was very concerned around 3 months back that she hadn't 
conceived and uh, even after many years of marriage. And uh, so, you know, I, I just sent her a verse that is 113 verse 9 and said, you know, claim this verse. Just take, take some time every day. Just hold on to was claim it. I just got a message from her yesterday saying, you know, in those dark periods, she's just claimed that verse, she's just held on to it. And then uh, she just realized that uh, she just, you know, they did a test that they figured that they were, uh, they were expecting a child. So, you know, a lot of this happens in, in the way that we progress in our spiritual life. So one of the ways that that we have our healing and deliverance is through our sanctification and consecration. Okay, I'm just opening it up for a brief few minutes to hear some testimonies because I know that many of us have been in that place where we've just seen that our healing has come about, uh, especially when, um, uh, when, when, you know, when it comes to the emotional self, especially when there have been people who've hurt us and then over years we've harbored uh, anger or resentment towards somebody. But uh, as we identify that there are, you know, we have, we are harboring unforgiveness in our heart and we bring that to God, um, you know, we, we begin to see that in time, um, that forgiveness has come by, okay, or that the, that we are able to meet the person eye to eye, we are able to talk to them or express our love to them. And uh, so that in itself is a journey that we see. So I just want to open it up for around two, three minutes to hear some testimonies or some, you know, where this has been real in your life, because this will encourage somebody else, or, you know, what your testimony will definitely speak to someone or bring about uh, their journey of healing. So opening this up for some testimony. And please feel free and um, open to discuss or to, to, to share this. Yes, Savni, go ahead. With due permission, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, uh, a few years back uh, when uh, I was in Delhi and we had this, uh, I had this severe knee pain. My knees were almost like not being able to walk in that condition. I was struggling to even walk. So uh, I, start, I went to the doctor and he went through the tests and everything. And uh, that time I was fellowshipping with within my housing society. We had a small fellowship group, and the place we used to go was four uh, four floors, and there were only staircase there, no lifts, nothing. So uh, doctors strictly, you know, had advised that you will not be going up the stairs. And um, twice a week we had to go to these four floors to worship and fellowship, and it was such a joyful time and. You know, once the doctor says, so we start believing, okay, now stop going. And, but I was not, you know, feeling comfortable about it. So uh, one day um, I just, uh, uh, we, were, we were praying for it. And uh, meanwhile, we went to the doctor and he uh, did a ECG test for me or something. And he, uh, with the report, when I went to him, he said, are you an athlete? So I said, doctor, I don't even walk fast. Forget running. <laughs> he said, your ECG so shows that that you are in some kind of athletics. And, uh, uh, you know, something he explained. I don't know the medical understanding of it. But he, I said, no, no, I'm not an athlete or something. I just simply, I'm all the time home. I'm not even walking around, uh, going out. But he said, uh, no, no, your uh, report shows that and this. So I just came back. I was wondering, uh, why why did he say such a thing, a doctor, you know? And then next morning, when I was reading the word, I found Habakkuk uh, 3, uh, 19. And uh, that word quickened to me and God said, I will make your feet like the feet of the hind and you will run and and I claimed that verse immediately. I said, Lord, thank you. Uh, yesterday, doctor said it, uh, uh, somebody said it, and today I'm claiming I will be like that. 
And I just said, I will not stop going up the stairs just because doctor said, because that is the place where, you know, I, I enjoy worshipping with you, fellowshipping with my other sisters and we were rejoicing there. And I just continued to go and with the, and that word still is with me. Anytime I feel that pain in my knee, I just claim that word. I said, Lord, you have given me that promise. I don't know. Uh, I will not take any medicine or something. Uh, you know, but uh, it's been more than four or five years, ma'am. Uh, God has been faithful and the word has helped me overcome and I've been able to do <laughs> my daily work and work uh, everything, uh, how Lord has led me through that word. So that word became uh, a life for me and has been a blessing to me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Amini. That's That's wonderful. Anybody else would like to share? Okay, so I think I'll I'll just uh, share something very briefly, um, uh, and and I'm sure a lot of us can can uh, relate to what I'm saying. Is that um, you know in grow in the in your growing up years you you face the different things that make you question about your um, identity or your capacity, your ability. And, and generally as adolescents, uh, this is a common feature that you see, you know, and if it is not caught early or if it is not dealt with early, it walks itself into adult life also. And um, uh, so, you know, th there are many s little, little circumstances that happen in your life that kind of makes you, reiterates some negative feelings about yourself. And, uh, and uh, you know, we've, all of us have gone through it in, as we have grown up. Um, but there were, there were these some, these thoughts that have been extremely negative that, you know, I used to engage in. And the more that you think about the thoughts, the more it becomes manifested in your behavior and in your circumstance, right? And that again reiterates those negative thoughts. But uh, it was, it's, I, you know, often you don't even realize that your mind is engaged in these thoughts. And, and that itself plays such a, places such a burden on your soul. And you, you know, as growing up, you don't even see the relation. It's almost like, you know, I'm just saying something and it doesn't, or why would it need to make meaning? You know, you, you kind of um, uh, always debate that. Uh, but as you, as you mature, as you learn from the word, as you read more, that's when you understand that whatever you harbor in your heart becomes very deep seated inside you. You know, it's almost like you're planting some of those negative seeds inside of you. And uh, that begins to manifest in different ways. You know, it can either manifest in your behavior, it can manifest in your health, it can manifest in your relationships, it can manifest in your diligence at work. These these little the rabbits of bitterness or or uh, self-defeat or self-loathing, self-hate, um, anger, uh, frustration, self-pity, all of that has the potential to just get sowed into the, to the soil of our hearts and then it manifests in very different ways. Um, and it, I didn't realize all of this, you know, as a new believer. I mean, it, it, they, these didn't connect very much up until the time that I was taught and began to learn that what you sow in is something that you will reap. And uh, this sanctification, this consecration happened, I, it's still happening, but it happened over years of being able to renew, to change the mind of what you have thought of yourself. And that came, and, and I keep, one of my favorite verses is Romans 8, 1, which says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now that's the verse that turned my um, understanding about how much uh, self-talk, negative self-talk can mean to you and your life. 
And it didn't go away for an, as an instant for me. But then the more that I read God's word, I began to almost, you know, parallelly look at what I've been saying to myself over many years and look at what God's word says. And it was such a stark contrast, you know, it's like white and black. That's how contrasting it was. And it was so clear that the more that you get sucked in to, to darkness or to the to that, you know, to the deep blackness of, of things, you there is a lot more of destruction and a lot more of loss and um, you know, you lose your soul. And this is all you're doing. Remember, this is all you're doing. And Satan has opened just, you know, just wants that in order to enter in and say, okay, you know, she's doing all that she wants. Let me just add on to the to the drama. But to recognize that and be able to keep consecrating yourself and say, what I'm thinking of is defiling. It, it is sin to God. If I am going to engage in negative self-talk, it is sin in God. I don't view myself in the way that I that God has viewed me. I'm seeing myself through my own lens or my glass, right? And that in itself, I have seen, has brought about physical healing and emotional healing. I'm still on that journey, definitely not reached there. And it is a pro process but it is a progress right so you will see that happening and um uh, you know so even as as we are talking about this think about any area of your soul that is deeply burdened or hurt it could be what somebody said what somebody did it can be thoughts that you're thinking about yourself it's doors that you've opened it could be the sin that you're you, you may be still engaging in um, any of this, you know, to be able to recognize and say, you know, I, that there has to be, I, I need to set this part of my life apart, this part of my life aside. And the more that you do it, you will, you will begin to see naturally that healing and deliverance. Okay. So let's move to the next point of, um, our second point is, I'm on page 20, for those of you who are, who'd like to follow. The second point that we're looking at is the healing and deliverance that comes through the presence of God and through his anointing, his anointing spirit. Okay, So we all know that God heals. He is a healing God. And it is the very presence of the Holy Spirit that brings hope for our healing, our deliver deliverance, our um, wholeness, and our restoration. So we see God's presence is real. It's full of love. And in his presence, there is complete transformation. So God's presence takes what is broken, and it brings about he healing. It takes what has been lost, and brings us to the right place with the Father. It satisfies those who are hungry, who are thirsty, who are weary. It's his presence that brings that light to the darkness. It is God's presence that is uh, presence and love that is being poured out to us on the driest and the deepest part of our soul. And we may, we can identify that there are those dry parts in our soul that can only be fulfilled by the presence and the fellowship that we have with God. So we we see that you know um, there are times that people just feel a sense of release during a time of um, worship or a time of ministry or a time of prayer, that there is something that just gets lifted off from them, you know, those heavy burdens or that, or that um, sense of darkness or that oppression that people may feel gets lifted off just being in the presence of God, just enjoying the presence of, of the Holy Spirit. And it, it is His presence and the anointing of the Spirit that releases 
uh, the healing and brings and, and sets people free. So if when we look at, um, uh, you know, the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The more that we stand in his presence, the more that we seek after God, we enjoy the presence that the more of the gift, the, the fruit of the spirit flows through us. Okay. And what whatever that's there that that is contrary hate anger bitterness um a desire to sin all of that you know gets transformed because of the fruit of the spirit that 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 get that is operational in us so just by the presence of god and the presence of the holy spirit is what brings us to our healing and deliverance okay um uh, is, would would anybody like to you know again over here uh is there something that that you all see has uh, has taken place because of what you've been what, what has taken place in the presence of of the lord any anyone would like to share or any any testimony that you all may have Uh, there are times that you know uh, if you've noticed um I, I mean i've had that many times that you're just sitting in the presence of the lord and you're weeping you don't know why you are weeping but you are weeping and once you know you finish that weeping it's almost as if just like all your tears have come out a lot of the burden and the weariness that's been there, that's stuck inside, is also out because it's just the presence of the Lord that uh, that just creates that sense of a washing out. You know, it's like it's like you being thrown into a washing machine, and you know, you come out as if all cleansed because of the of that of 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 what you've been able to release. Um, outside yeah i think yeah i think that have been uh, anita has said that the, her husband has had severe back pain for almost two years on 30th jan night we were in god's presence worshiping and he was healed totally yeah yeah right so so you you have you've seen those those testimonies just after a period of worship you kind of sense that that dark spirit or that dark feeling of sadness just completely lifts you know it's it's almost as if something has just been pushed out out, out from you yeah so the healing healing and deliverance takes place just in the presence of god and that's something that you know we need to encourage ourselves that going back to the presence of god uh, just sitting at his feet i think very many times when we are discouraged just being in the presence of the Lord is a form of encouragement. You know, um, there is this verse uh, in Scripture that I, you know, that I often uh, bring back. Uh, I, I'll just read that. It's in Psalm 55, verse um, six, six uh, seven, and eight. You know, at at times in your, you may be going through severe emotions, maybe your fear or uh, it. If you look at verse 5, I'll, I'll read it from verse uh, 4 onwards, Psalm 55, verse 4 onwards. It says, My heart is severely pained within me, and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me, and horror has overwhelmed me. And I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then I would fly away and be at rest. Indeed, I would wander far off and remain in the wilderness i would hasten my escape from the windy storm and the tempest and if you look later at verse 20 uh, sorry verse as 18 it says he has redeemed my soul in peace from the battle which was against me okay so all of that 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 builds up that that comes to a place of overwhelm 
um, you know, when, like the psalmist said, he was looking for a place of release. He was looking for a place of rest and a place of comfort. And he finds that in the presence of the Lord because it says, um, you know, he says, I will call upon the Lord. Verse 16 says, I will call upon the Lord and the Lord shall save me. And verse 18 says, he has redeemed my soul in peace from the battle which was against me. Okay, so to just being in the presence of God is in itself creates that emotional wholeness. Okay, I think Susan also said, um, has given an ex uh, given I underwent this experience of weeping in his presence and feeling his anointing yeah so I'm, I'm sure this is something where a lot of us have received our wholeness or our our emotional healing just by being in the presence of the Lord just being in a time of prayer being in a time of worship um, we, we do receive that healing okay all right um, moving on okay are there any questions up until now or can can we move on to the third point any questions okay all right so when we look at the third point uh, we'll, we'll just begin with this and we'll take it on uh, again a little further in our next class in our next uh, hour so our healing and deliverance also comes through our active resistance through our active resistance so there is there are certain action points that we may we do need to take in order to be in a place where we can receive our healing and deliverance and what are these action steps so let's look at the two verses that's there um, one is james 4 7 and first peter 1 13. could somebody please read those verses out James 4 7 James chapter 4 verse 7 and first Peter 1 verse 13 can I read master go ahead go ahead Christopher yeah James 4 7 therefore submit to God resist the devil and he will flee from you and 1 Peter 1 13 therefore gird up the loins of your mind be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. Mm -hmm. So when we look at this, you know, these action steps, like I said, our healing and deliverance comes through some action steps that we need to take up, certain resistance, some steps that show us a, a, a resistance. So the first one, as we see in James 4, 7, is to resist the devil okay to to not even to not come to to not be in submission to the devil so the the scripture i mean the verse before that says therefore submit to god so when you submit to god what are you doing you are automatically resisting the devil when you submit your will your thoughts your words your actions everything to god your decisions you are resisting the devil okay so if you're doing one the other takes place now if you submit to the devil you're resisting his his power and god's power and authority over you so submitting to god helps you to resist the devil and when you resist the devil he will flee from you when the enemy knows that you are his he has no business to touch you okay and when you walk in obedience to god's word and to what to to the will of god uh, the enemy has no place to to get you so as you keep yourself clean now submission to god think of it you know as, as we spoke about it in the first verse submitting to god is also to be able to walk in holiness to walk in purity to consecrate yourself when you do that when you're cleaning out your garbage every day by submitting to god the devil has no place there he will flee from you he doesn't like clean places he likes muck he likes dirt he's attracted to dirt and muck and so he will not be there he will flee so it is resisting the devil and that is an action point that we need to take in order to receive that healing and deliverance okay uh, we'll come back with the second point 
after we uh, close for a break. My, my clock shows 10.50, so let's return back at 11. You can grab a cup of coffee and some biscuits or some dinner for those of you who's night and meet you soon. <laughs>